My entire life, I've related my existence to material things. Not because I value them or that I value myself for that matter, but that's just how I'm wired. You know, I always wanted a car from the year I was born. Felt like it linked me to an unalterable past as I pushed forward ceaselessly to an unavoidably indeterminate future. That car? 1985 Buick Regal sedan. But Bella died. That's what I named her. So I introduce you to Bronson. 2005 Pontiac Grand Prix. Named after the criminal, not the actor. No, 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 it's, it's not being materialistic. You see, I see signs where there aren't any. Take the drawings I did as a child, for example. In them, I see premonitions. That's why I make them. It helps me express myself. But more importantly, it helps me... helps me understand myself. Every time I get behind the wheel, I don't know if it'll be on the line for Bronson. If I'll even get away. I just leave it to the law of odds and hell. Because eventually, all things, they must fail. This engine, it's akin to my heartbeat. <sighs> okay, where did we leave from? This is Mo. This is Mo. We were coming. I have no idea. We go to the Fascinating. Because morals, they evolve. It's an evolution. The whole idea of a code of ethics, it's a living document. One that's created by man and ordained by some deity. But it's a breathing set of guidelines. And it changes. Always has changed, always will. And these breathing set of guidelines are subjective. And the cause of all of human history's wars. One group doesn't approve of another group, and then boom! And you can analyze this on micro or macro levels. It's always the same. Disagreement ensues. So by nature of that law, by that credo, I'm a lawbreaker. In the eyes of God, or most people's gods, I'm a sinner. You see, when I look in the mirror, whereas you, you look at me right here, right now, as this camera it captures me through its lens, what does it see? It sees a man. I'm merely a man. I'm man. Consider what was forbidden and frowned upon 50 years ago. Women's rights. Gay rights. Racial inequality. What did people have to say then? Or how about thousands of years of civility with one religion trying to eradicate another in the name of their God? I I'm not comparing myself to any of that. I'm flat out stating that these moral evaluations, they change year to year, day to day. These are all examples that these interpretations, they change. So as a result, I am you and you are me, historically speaking. I'm a product. I'm a result. I'm change. I'm intrigued by that word, change, oh. because people throw it around, but... Not all change is good, is it? Is there a sense of danger because of the way that... Well, danger, danger is just the anticipation of fear. You see, fear is a product of the mind. It's a, a discipline, self-survival technique. People, they fear me, I know that. I see it in their eyes, I see it in their faces. As a result, 
I am the danger and they are the fear. Now, evil, on the other hand, it comes in many forms. It paints with many different brushes. Mine happens to be a shard of glass or a, a knife the size of your forearm. And I have a tendency to paint in broad strokes. That's fairly straightforward. We can do anywhere between two to five jobs a month, depending on the job. Other than that, it's the same Rick Marole, day in and day out with just various locations, of course. You've worked with this company for six years? Ten. Well, it'll be ten in September. In this shit, you kid. It's a lot of physicality, isn't it? You must get pretty shot doing this every day. You get accustomed to it. Look, I didn't want a job that I had to take home with me. Stress and sweating it out on my own time, no thanks. Here I work five days a week, 40 hours a week. I get paid what I'm doing, and the rest of the time is mine. I think people only give up too much of their lives towards something that's really designed only to sustain. What if they like what they do, professionally? I'll concede that. But it's rare. It's like digging for a grave and finding treasure. It's not happening. Well, when we began principal photography in November of the prior year, and so this was about six months after I plucked Ellis out of NYU's cinematography program, it was under the guise of, and with the explicit understanding that Noel had served nine years of a 16-year term at Sing Sing Federal Penitentiary for a lust-related double murder, crime of passion stuff. Because of good behavior and increasingly positive psychological evaluations, he was released in 2015. After a month of pre-production and two weeks of filming, Ellis embarked on shamefully belated research, and his procrastinated due diligence revealed that Noel had never been at Sing Sing, or in any prison. He had never been caught, and there was no crime of passion. This was a string of murders. It was a ruse. So we aired it out with Noel, who felt just dreadful for the misinformation. And Ellis and I were left with a substantial moral, ethical, and legal conundrum. <sighs> we made our choice. So, it's fairly simple stuff, you see? Yes. No, I, I get it now. We want you to use these whenever you want. You need more batteries, need more micro SD cards, anything. Don't hesitate. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of it. And, and when the card is full, do I drop them off with you? Or... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine. And you have five backup mini cards right here in case you need them. Mm. Just be careful not to shoot over anything. Once one card is full, just pop it out and put in a clean one. And these ones in the car, are they the same as before? Yep. Just turn them on when you want to and off when you don't need them. Oh, mm -hmm. and obviously leave the backup hard drive safe at your apartment. That's a just-in-case maneuver where mildly neurotic. Mm. And we'll update that every few days. So you will be the proud owner of every single item we shoot for this film. You guys really want the full Noel experience, huh? <laughs> We do. Um, we also have this mount for you, the body mount, so that you can attach the camera to it, and then you don't have to use your hands. <laughs> this uh, sort of takes me back a little. Takes you back? Yeah, so when I was a young man and things became difficult at home, I immersed myself into cinema, uh, films of the 40s and 50s in particular. I really loved their way of life, their manner of speech, <laughs> everything, really. As a byproduct, I became interested in editing. Uh, how, depending on how you edit a narrative, you really can manipulate different points of views. But I never really got to try my hand at it. Really? How interesting. We, we had no idea. I recently bought a MacBook uh, for the purpose of playing with the iMovie application. Um, but it's more fun this way to get the hands-on experience. So, uh, any musings, any thoughts, anything you can think of? Uh, right. We just don't want to miss anything when we're not around. Mm -hmm. This this now is a part of it then? Anything it's... can be. Um, it just well, it depends later on in the editing process. Right. Editing, yeah. Oh, uh, 
please pay heavy focus when you get... Uh, oh, um, the unscratchable itch. Is that right? Is that what you call it? Yes, I, I think it helps uh, clarify something that's difficult to describe. No, may I ask, um, how many people know about your activities? Just you two gentlemen. Well, what makes you trust us? I mean, that's if you do, of course. I trust you as far as I need to. So far, anyway. Which may or may not be a good thing. Meaning, perhaps, part of you wants to be caught, or at least not have such a heavy burden of secret on your shoulders. The difficulty in discussing the trusting of others, one first has to trust themselves. You wouldn't say you trust yourself? Would you? No. I don't mind you asking. I've been single for a few years now. When was your last significant relationship? There was only one, Michaela. We were together for about three years. What happened? I've been asking myself that same question for seven years now. We drifted apart is what really happened. Chalk it up to two people whose lives were drastically heading into different directions. I had just started my job that I currently have. I was happy. But she had grander plans. She wanted to pursue them. Did things end amiably? Sure. They were more somber, melancholic, as opposed to anything resentful. I loved her more than anything in the entire world. On the first day that we started dating, I knew I would marry her. And then I didn't get to. She was my best friend. She was my soulmate. When things ended, it was wholly devastating. It was catastrophic. But not once did I ever get angry at her. And I keep her here. Always. Have you dated anyone since? No, there's no point. What role did your proclivities play in your relationship? None. How is that possible? She was unaware. I made sure that it remained that way. But how did it affect you, and so much as your relationship, I mean? I'm so sorry, guys, but the battery's about to run out. Just keep it going, Ellis. Sorry, no. Please, carry on. It didn't. To be able to do what I do, to be able to remain at large as long as I have, one has to be intensely good at compartmentalizing. You have to be able to switch from one facet of your life to another, treat them as separate lives. You have to make that distinction in your mind. This serves the primary purpose of not losing your mind and the secondary purpose of not getting caught. Good. There, I've been itching to ask that of you. You said that you killed your first victim in 2002 when you were only 17. How have you remained at large? Compartmentalization and the nature of random selection. Have you ever killed somebody you knew? No. No, the... It's not how I work. It's not how I'm wired. That's not part of the outlet for me. Besides, that would lead to apprehension, which would imply motive. Do you mean being caught, obviously? Yes, exactly. Can you elaborate on the idea of compartmentalization and random selection, as you put it? Well, the first is easy, like I said. It's about not losing your mind and not getting caught. Oh, sorry, this... uh, not, not to cut you off, but as a journalist and a storyteller, I must ask this question. You don't consider yourself insane? No. Psychopaths are not cognizant enough to know that they are psychopaths. But I am fully self-aware to know that I'm not a psychopath. A sociopath, then? Yes. Of course, it, it is impulse. It's amazing to me how well you seem to know yourself and how comfortable you are with it. It's interesting, isn't it? The, the foggy area between who you are and who you perceive yourself to be introspectively. See, if you were to look into a mirror right now, you wouldn't see yourself. You would see an abstraction. 
an informed reflection, perhaps an alienated one, but certainly an altered one. Do you think you know yourself? Yeah, I'd like to think so. That changes. Possibly. Definitely. Please, continue. If you can successfully compartmentalize your life, then nothing leaks. So I would come home, and Michaela, she wouldn't see anything. She wouldn't see it on my face. She couldn't smell anything. I wouldn't be shaky or concerned. Everything that I had done would be locked tightly in a secret box of history. And I could keep my past there when I wanted to. What stops you when your impulse takes over from killing a loved one, let's say? Because I love them. I'm not an insane man. I, you have to understand, there was no love in my house after Ethan died, so... So love is very important to me. I wouldn't kill someone I love for the most obvious of reasons. What do you think Michaela would have said if she ever found out? I don't know. I take solace in not knowing. We used to sing this song together. You say jump, I say how high. Do you know it? Yeah. We used to change the words, though. We used to say, you say jump, I say what roof. She used to always laugh at that. Random. And what about you? Failed potential. We certainly didn't rush into the decision to go on this journey to make this film, but we're tired of waiting for validation from an uncaring and very difficult industry. I think you made the right choice. It's, it's a bold move. Thank you. I think this is a deli here. I'm gonna go grab something to drink. My throat's parched. So. Salty chips? Salty chips to you, too. <laughs> Gentlemen, do you guys like anything? No, no, thank nah, you. I'm good, thank you. You sure? Mm hmm. Thanks. Yeah. I'll be back in just a moment. Uh, we gotta get an agent. Maybe this will get us one. Yeah, maybe. I know. I know we do, but as you well know, it's not like applying for a credit card. Right. The way, how's Lana taking everything? Impatient. Impatiently. She's getting fed up. I get it. Well, maybe I if you it. take a different approach, that might be able to... Oh, fuck! Fuck! Oh. Oh, no. shit! Shit! Wait, what are you doing? We, we can't leave him here. I'm not gonna be, gonna I can't caught. stay here. I'm not gonna be an accessory to murder. Oh, fuck, fuck, I don't know. Go, go, go. I don't know, no. The, the doc, oh, fuck it. Oh, go, 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 go. go. Fuck it. Ready? So, this just came in a few minutes ago. 2.37 a.m. This is a voicemail from Noel. Hello, Harold. So that... That was awkward. Look, I understand that wasn't part of the deal, really. And I didn't mean to implicate or involve you guys in any way. I, I hope you're not sore. Compulsion... And the itch... They're very real and uncontrollable. Maybe it's good you got a first-hand look for yourselves. No hard feelings, I hope. And all right. Loretta does not dislike you. She likes you just fine. Honey, she's about as fond of me as she is of a wasp sting. <laughs> no, not true. She's just skeptical of you, that's all. Skeptical? Weary. I meant to say weary. Yeah, maybe, but you didn't. Weary! How is weary any better? <laughs> Aren't we supposed to be celebrating Brian's birthday? Isn't Shut that... your trap, Alice. You said you wanted to be here, and we'll all be 
thrilled that you recorded this when we see this little guy's face light up when he sees the cracklers. <laughs> what time are you guys filming tomorrow? Um, are you filming tomorrow? At some point, I think. Well, are you still meeting me for lunch? Because I have a showing that I have to be at in Port Chester around 1.15. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I yeah. can do that. Hello, yeah. Errol. Oh. No. Would uh, you... This, uh, this is my wife, Lana. Nice uh, and my son, Brian. You want to come meet Brian? Come here. Was so... come here. Brian, come here. You want to meet my friend, Noel? <sighs> this is no, and this is Brian. Don't go say hi to mommy. Go get mommy, okay? Uh, join us. Come here. Errol, may I speak to you for just a moment, please? Listen, um, frankly, I'm a bit embarrassed about what occurred last night. No, don't be. Please. I appreciate that. I just want to make sure you know that I, I respect the project immensely, and I wouldn't want to do anything to put you gentlemen in any sort of compromising... We are absolutely aware of that, and we thank you for it, really. Thank you. Come. Okay. Sure. I'm not freaking out. I'm not, okay? I am merely concerned, and rightfully so. I agree that you are right to be surprised. Oh, thank you. Babe, I'm not fighting with you on that, I, but you have nothing to be concerned about, okay? So can we please have this dialogue when we get home privately? No, Errol, let's not, because I don't want a drug-addled man around our child, okay? So we're gonna talk about it right now. What in the hell are you talking about? He's an ex-drug addict, he's in recovery, and he's clean right now, right? Always. I I don't, I don't even know why this is an argument. Like, it blows my mind. It blows my mind that this scenario right now is okay with you. Are you joking with no. me? I mean, first of all, how did he even know where we were? Because I told him. You told him? Yes, Lana, as in conversation. I mean, I didn't invite him. Do you just want to take him and go? No, we came all the way down here. It's like 15 minutes by car. I don't want car. this night ruined for our son, okay? Okay. What happened? Nothing. She's just... Pissed. Why? Not buying a drug angle? No, she just doesn't want him around Brian. She totally buys it. That's the problem. She's just nervous. Let's go have some fun, huh?
up early. I'll see you boys Thursday. Be careful. Be careful, I'm unfit. I'm unsound. No. No, what is it? What happened? You can't expect to stand on the shoulders of the devil and walk away and escape. I'm unfit. I'm unsound. What do you mean? Look, it's okay. I unwillingly participate in this life and now it's become something else entirely. I'm unsound, Errol. I'm unfit. Do you, want to, do you want to see someone? Speak with somebody, no. No, no. If you ever want to take a good look at yourself, don't stop in the mirror. Take my word for it. I'm gonna need a break, boys. I can't keep going. Yeah, sure, we, we can resume after lunch, it's okay. Live longer than that! We don't want to wait too long, no, no. So we're left with what? I mean, we gotta go to Mount. First and foremost, we have no legally binding agreement with him. So we have, uh, well, there's virtually nothing we can do, but if we wait, then. Obviously, we don't have a legally binding contract with him, Ellis. Don't get snippy, man. All I'm saying is that without that and being in this sort of corner, it just, it largely becomes about the journey and the adventure of where is this going to end. Right? If we wait it out, and we obviously have to, or if we decide to, it does help shape the narrative. So you're saying that this is a good thing that this happened? No, not at all. But it's a silver lining. Many of them, actually. All right, let me put this way. As filmmakers, we're always trying to shape up the narrative, right? I mean, that's what we do. That's our job. Yeah. But it's about letting the narrative shape us. And most crucially, no. It's one hell of a twist with Gabriella. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, maybe he just needs some space. Maybe we do too. I don't know. I don't know, but let's roll with it. How come we never talked about it? About what? The other night. The deli. I don't know. Because I guess it was... I mean, it... why do we have to talk about it? It was this horrible and bizarre thing that happened. And we're still here. We're documentarians. It's just part of life. It can be a horror show. I know. But we're both individually and collectively ignoring the fact that there's no coming to terms with it yet. Do you feel guilty? Guilty? Why? Okay, so Noel has an outburst, right? And he cannot control himself for a few seconds. Isn't that as tame as it's going to get with someone like him? That was stupid, wasn't it? Reciprocally, permit me to point out that we don't even know who Noel is yet, right? I mean, you say somebody like him, but who is he? I mean, our whole initial relationship is built on a lie. Total fabrication. Part of this process and the fundamentals of this story is finding out who he is what that person is capable of. We don't know when he's lying. And we don't know when he's telling the truth. Yeah, but you just said that there's no coming to terms to it. Not yet. So what are you referring to? The threat? I don't know. 
death, sure, the threat, just the oddity of it, the sort of spectacle of it all. Do you feel guilty? Yeah, of course, because who knows where that could have led. We discussed the eventuality of that and the potential liability, but when you're there, it's like war. You hear about it, you read about it in history books, movies and lessons, but when you're in it, you know? Maybe, you know, maybe we're doing a war film. Look, take Maze and Skimmy Shelter. Went so far, so far as to show a murder on film. Right? Like, life happens, man. It was supposed to be a concert film and it turned into chaos. That's just part of the process. It's just part of, uh, it's part of existing. But they weren't implicit in it. For argument's sake. Yeah, I mean, but... Imagine if someone had that kind of insight on Manson or um, uh, what is it, uh, Gacy, Donner, Bundy, any of them. Even worse, people not that bad. Can you even fathom the psychological contributions, the cultural impact it would have had? It's quite possible that this is a war film in its own way. Maybe that's how it plays out. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe that's that's the new approach. Maybe that's that's, that's what it was from the beginning. Just war in all its forms. It sure feels like it sometimes. How many times do I have to tell you to lock the door? How do you know it wasn't locked? Because you didn't unlock it, idiot. Oh, well that's fair. We have footage!
Oh my god! Oh god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Stifle oh my god. your squealing, oh sugar tits! Oh okay, okay. I know it was a bit much, but look, see, look, see, look, see, look, see, look, look, look. Shh, 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 shh. Hush, 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 little baby, don't say a word. Papa's gonna oh buy God. you a mockingbird. Watch your go. <laughs> don't need that. Don't need that. Certainly don't need that. Oh <laughs> I gotta go. You take care of yourself, chap, all right? Good seeing you! Some gents. How are things, no? Aces, gentlemen. Aces. Feeling much better. So glad to hear it. I've been working on myself quite a bit. I'm not sure if coming to terms is really the right phrase, but I've certainly been negotiating some of the bigger baggage better in light of the recent events and revelations, as you know, of course. Well, that's really superb. And thank you, by the way. I, I appreciate your patience. It doesn't go unnoticed. I just want you to know that. Of course. Yeah, man. No sweat. So, some big news. Tomorrow, I'll be seeing Michaela and meeting Gabriella for the very first time. Oh, how do you feel? Are you, are you excited? I, words pay it no service, gentlemen. I, <laughs> my heart, it's, it feels like it's growing a new one. <laughs> if that makes any sense. And I'm excited and nervous and anxious, but grateful and, and usually all at once. And where are you guys meeting? Norris, it's a diner in town. Um, it's supposed to be a beautiful day tomorrow, and there's a beautiful patio there. I'll be leaving work a little early, and, and Michaela, she still works in the evenings. Who watches Gabriella when she's at work? Michaela has a regular babysitter. Supposedly very pleasant, and uh, Gabriella absolutely adores her. And she's got a boyfriend, right? How should I know if the babysitter has a boyfriend? No. <laughs> yes. Michaela's been seeing someone for a while now. He recently moved west for work and so they've been doing the long distance arrangement when are you meeting them noon you know what my next question is i do and the answer has to be no Earl. really why because it's too personal but that's what makes it all the more important for you not for me for okay? us for all of us Listen, I, I wouldn't put it to you any other way but the right way and the honest way. And I'm telling you that this is an imperative and essential moment for you, for your story. Our film, this movie, is, it's your story. I, I don't want to be a jerk or, or press you too hard on this, but I really must be insistent. Well, is there a, a happy medium of sorts that you... Well, yeah, there, there usually is. What do you have in mind? Well, I don't want a camera in my daughter's face. I don't want her subjected to that. Do you understand? Yep. What if you were to film from a distance? That way you could capture the moments, but less intrusively. Yeah, can we love you? What does that mean? Can we put a mic on you? Uh, sure. Yes, but, but from a distance. Deal? Deal. All right, I'll, I'll come to your home, uh, let's say, a little before noon, and we can talk more about it then. Sounds great. All right, gentlemen. You have a good day. You Bye. too, Noel. How you feeling there, muscles? Hmm. Mint condition, wicked delish. Really, though? Feeling okay? I'm in shambles. How can I help? 
You really can't. I'm excited. Really, I am, but it's that terrified excitement that you can't shake out of your stomach. I don't usually get queasy often. I know. You're gonna do great. Thank you, Al. Hey, Alice? Yeah? The car packed? Oh, wait, are you Mike? Yes, yes, Alice already took care of it. Yep, the car's ready, too. Great. You okay? Yes. Every time I get behind the wheel, I don't know if he's going to start. Life is the end of the line for good old Bronson. Bronson, is he? So the Pontiac has a name. Named after the criminal, not the actor. The criminal is named after the actor. Yes, but still two very, very different men. Understood. Last check. Ready? I will be. Why don't you gentlemen go first and I'll trail closely behind. All right. Hi. Hey. I know. It's cold out, huh? <laughs> How are you? I'm well. I'm well. It's good to see you. Honey? Gabby, baby? Do you know who this is? This is your daddy. Remember all the pictures you saw? This is him. Hi, Gabriella. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. It's really lovely to meet you. Yolanda, do you want to see my picture? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'd love to see your pictures. All she does is draw. Oh. She brings them everywhere. She even skipped coloring books. Draws her own new colors in. That's amazing. These are beautiful. Look at this one. Yeah? This one. This is Mrs. Gallagher, my teacher. And that's Sam. You have a dog, Sam. <laughs> Would you draw something for me someday? Oh, you better go in now. Yeah. <laughs> She'll draw you 50 things by lunch. Are you hungry, Gabriella? What do you say we get something to chow down on? Okay. Okay? There for you. Well, it's not that I don't understand how and why they became popular. I'm just saying that serendipity had a lot to do with it. Serendipity or luck? <laughs> what do you think the difference is? I don't know, actually. Take Hansen's Mbop, for example. I posit that if their chorus was actually comprised of words as opposed to whimsical, prepubescent rambling, that it never would have made a dent. Nobody would have heard it because that was a part of his charm. If that's what you'd call it. <laughs> I remember the first time I heard it, I thought to myself, what the fuck are they going on about? Am I mid-stroke? Are <laughs> they putting me on? I mean, what's the score here? I was super high once, and I listened to uh, Justin Timberlake's Let's Take a Ride. 75 times in a row, and I convinced myself it was about Clifford the dog fighting in the Korean War. <laughs> you know, come to think of it, no, I've never seen you do anything. You ever smoke the occasional joint or drink anything? No, only cigarettes. You're a Catholic boy, you should know about abstaining. I am, and I have the yardstick marks to prove my 12 years in Catholic school. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, kidding about the beatings, but we had that stereotypical priest who used to shout out quotes about, about the devil. Put the fear of God in you. <laughs> Do you remember any of them? The quotes, yeah, but I only use them when I think I'm in trouble. It's your hat. I've never seen you wear it before. Oh. It is yours, I presume. 
Yes, I, I didn't know it was in here. It's from a long time ago. Really, though, good for you. It's not easy resisting those types of things, for a lot of people, anyway. Well, for me, it's always been easy. I just don't like to lose control of my emotions. I just wanted to come say hi, but you started running, so I decided to run with you. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Gentlemen, this is my friend Monica. We used to do repertory theater back in Terrytown. Are you still over there? Yes! What are you guys working on right now? Now we're doing Shakespeare, tons of stuff, oh you should God. come. I should come visit and see a show, no. shouldn't I? It was at this moment that I realized I would never understand Noel. Much akin to the struggle of pinpointing the precise moment a relationship took a sour turn, or perhaps traversing through the annals of a fading memory in a desperate hope to recapture a glory that once was. There's an evasive disconnect between emotion and true understanding. From the beginning, there was always a real yearning to learn what made Noel tick. And like an ancient clock, that ticking would somehow always be there. But the specifics and the overall reasoning would forever be lost in a rough sea of prevailing uncertainty and moral dilemma. He was a man who knew no bounds, yet lived sternly within them, an anomaly of humanity of time and place, of good and evil. He simply was. Want to talk about what's on your mind? I don't think so. Okay. That's okay. It's not good enough, you know. What is it? Any of it. When I was a young boy, my brother Ethan and I would invent these scenarios. Some day later in life, we would abscond to some paradise. In all our versions, we would meet there. In hindsight, I don't know why we wouldn't just go together. Maybe we imagined we'd have our own lives, our own families and we would flee them to go to paradise. Where was paradise? It always changed. Sometimes it was the northeastern part of the United States or Europe. We could always pick these iconic meeting points. Eiffel Tower, Big Ben, villa on the mountainside of Italy. It's funny what paradise is to a young boy who lives so far from it. I've heard you mention your brother's name before, but never any more than that.
My brother Ethan drowned in a town pool at the age of 10. I was nine. The pool was packed that day. We were doing cannonballs, splashing everyone around us, getting dirty looks from couples nearby and looks of glee from the children who eventually joined in, if their parents let them. Ethan must have slipped and hit his head on that last one. There were a great many splashes and scores of people. And after a while, we were all there and he wasn't. I looked for him at one point. I didn't see him, but I didn't think anything wrong of it. Seems like the more people who are there to save you, Less attention is paid to danger. It was too blissful of a day for accident. It was too obvious. It was just too out in the open. I'm so sorry, Noel. Needless to say, the home I grew up in ceased to exist. It became a much darker place. I want therapy. But whatever it is that I need. I want to change as a man. I just don't know how to approach it. I need to talk to someone. I want to be a father to Gabrielle. I can't turn myself into the authorities or an institution, and there's the irony in it. I have to if I want to be a father to her. And I can't if I want to be a father to her. And I want to set out on a journey of truth and recovery with the biggest lie of all. There's got to be a way. Sometimes I feel that maybe I'm just too far gone. That subconsciously I just want to get caught. Deep down, I know, but I don't. There must be some middle ground where you can seek treatment without confessing, divulging everything. Maybe. One thing I do know for sure is that I need a change. I need to change. If I'm to progress in that, then this will have to go on hiatus again. Anything can be arranged. Thank you. I want to go home. So Ellis and I are trying. Okay, before we even started rolling on this project, we had planned on launching a Kickstarter for mm -hmm. finishing funds, uh, mostly for post-production. Do you want to explain what Kickstarter is and about the crowdfunding I mean, and all that? No. No, I don't. Okay. Anyway, let right. me finish. Well, we just realized that we have no idea how to pitch this film. I mean, given the obvious subject matter, we can't. Can't really even use the cover story of the drug angle either. Why not, actually? Well, I mean, I guess we could. I don't know, I just feel like it needs to be 
sympathetic or chipper or something for people to want to donate. You know, that's not entirely true. I mean, it is it is important. It's topical. It, it's got all that. And it is sympathetic. Well, it can be sympathetic. Well, it can be sympathetic. I mean, how far up our own assholes did we have to be to just completely <laughs> gloss over this entire <laughs> section of the project? Uh, oh. <sighs> Wait, is that the last beer? Hey, you know, it's the ever persistent arrow. <laughs> I know I've left a few of these, but we miss you. Listen, we don't even have to talk about resuming shooting or the project at all. We just want to hear that you're all right. Here are things are coming along for you. We're going to start the editing process soon. Edit as you go, so that'll be rich for confusion and excitement and long slumberless nights. <laughs> anyway, two weeks is a while. Give me a shot when you're feeling up to it, okay? Thanks, buddy. And how did that come about? The transitions, you mean? Yes. What was the process generally and how speedily? Immediate. The night of the funeral, after that, when we came home, Everything was different. Everything changed. My father, he started drinking heavily, as did my mother, but with her it was mostly the pills. I lost my parents after that night, in respect of how I always knew them. What effect did Ethan's death have on you? And again, I mean immediately after his passing. I was old enough to comprehend the weight of it all. But still too young to be able to grieve properly. I was terribly sad. Depressed, even. But with my parents being distant and resentful at times, I didn't really have an outlet for any of it. How were they resentful towards you? By being distant, I guess. At least that's how I remembered it. Do you feel they blamed you for his death and the accident itself? I don't know. I think they resented the fact that I was still alive. You think they favored Ethan over you? Only afterwards. After he was gone. Mm. I think if the roles were reversed, that he would have experienced a similar trauma. Where are your parents now? Dead. My poor mother, she died of kidney failure. Mm. My father, he died of life. I was 12 when I left home. Where did you go at such a young age? Around. When did the violent urges you want to focus our session on begin? Around the time of Ethan's passing? The night we buried him, I put a hole through my bedroom wall. It's pretty strong for a nine-year-old boy. I used an axe. How did you have access to that? The garage door was unlocked. I'm sorry to jump around, but I... Our time is growing increasingly limited, and I want to make sure... Sorry, let me turn this off. I want to make sure that we've arrived at this. Um, what was the big turn of events that you wanted to speak about? Well, it turns out that Michaela's introduction of Gabriella was solely self-motivated. How so? She wants me to take her. To have full custody. Did she give you a reason? The abridged version is that her boyfriend moved out west for work a few weeks ago and she now wants to join him in a month's time. She wants to start fresh and relocate, as she puts it. Why not take Gabriella with her? She had many reasons. 
central one being that she doesn't want to uproot Gabrielle now that she's doing so well in school mm. and making friends. You see, Michaela, she moved around a lot in her youth. And she understands the detrimental impact of it. Do you have other suspicions? I think she truly believes that Gabriella could have a better life with me. Mm. I could hear it in her voice, feel it in her words, the way she said it. Also, she mentioned that although her boyfriend is a good man, he has some unsavory habits. She doesn't want to expose Gabriella to them. Do you think that's a lot of it? Probably not. But like I said, a better life. How does that make you feel? The possibility of having sole custody of Gabriella? More elated than I could ever imagine. So you're doing it? Yes. Well, I'm very happy for you. And I'm sorry, but... Our time is up. Yeah. Might be. How the fuck could you let that slip? I've already apologized to you about it, okay? But I really want an answer, not just an apology. It's not like it was a slip of the tongue. It was in an email. I mean, Jesus Christ, Ellis, whose team are you on? Right, don't talk to me like I'm beholden to you. We're co-directors, we're co-producers. I slipped up. And that's that. Yeah, that's that. Until Noel has a spiked soldering iron shoved two feet up your asshole in the town square for the city folk to feast their eyes on. It might not even register with him when he reads it. Of course it'll register with him when he reads it. In fact, the moment he reads it, because he's not a fucking idiot like you are, he made it explicitly clear to not film his daughter. Oh, fuck you, man. Why were you even communicating with him behind my back in the first place? Behind your back? <laughs> what? What are th this? Is this middle school all over again? That's it, right? Just because I had a conversation with someone and you're not around it, it doesn't mean it was clandestine. This wasn't a conversation, dickface. This was an email and I should have been CC'd Fine. on it. But the rest of them, you will be, okay? He's a goddamn psychopath and you're baiting him with your mindless bullshit. Mm -hmm. I've got a family to protect and you oh, better not no. give him cause no. to turn on either of us due to your carelessness. No, please. please. Don't throw your family in the front lines right when the enemy's approaching. They're not shields. Exactly. That's what you're doing. No. No. I'm, all I'm saying is don't use them to reignite some fucking righteous sense of duty or savior complex. Oh, oh yeah, you do that. You hide behind that always. You knew the risk in documenting someone like Noel, and you jumped on board willingly with both feet. Calculated risks. Not shaking the can before you leave it in the sun. All I'm saying is don't fuck with me or my family. What an ego, man. No, it's not about ego. It's about finishing the goddamn film and coming out on the other end in one piece to not take needless risks. You need to tell them that you mistyped or weren't thinking or something. No, there are no parentheses in film, Harold. That's what's on screen and what isn't, okay? You, you can't rewrite what happened, man. It's a documentary. We're too involved. We're part of the story. Hell, we are the story, because who the fuck knows where Noel is? All right, let's cool off, okay? Let's take some time. We'll start editing in a few days. Guess we'll know by then really where we stand. Yeah. Lana. How long have you been standing there? I can only hope this lens serves as a mirror to the twisted mission that you're on and the danger that you're putting your family in, you sick fucks. It's editing day. Editing day. Hello everyone, it's day one of editing where we hope to sift through the many hours of footage and see if we can't begin to locate some key, cohesive narrative threads. Alice? Uh, yeah, just uh, basically seeing where we are in our journey to the first cut and um, 
as well as just help guide the movie, guide the shoot. Exactly. So we both took the day. I'm not sure if anyone even knows that we have day jobs, do they? I don't think we mentioned it, no. I mean, I don't even know if we're going to use this, to be honest. Probably not. Anyway, we both took the day from our respective day jobs that you may or may not know that we had. I, should we tell them what our day jobs are? No, let's just focus, okay? We've already... Jesus. It's probably just the mailman. Is Dwayne Johnson your mailman? <laughs> God. Yeah, there's, uh, there's probably a hole in the door. <laughs> we have footage. Seriously? Awesome. Let's take a look. The mail guy must have been in a rush because he was halfway down the block by the time I even opened the door. <laughs> Neither rain, nor snow, nor good manners. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hmm. Looks like an empty card. It's just got the one video. Jesus. What? This is my house. This is here. Oh my god. Um, uh, what, what is it? This was shot today. Brian stayed home from preschool with a fever. And that's him now. It's editing day. Editing day. It's day one of editing where we hope to sift through the many hours of footage and see if we can't begin to locate some key, cohesive narrative threads. Alice? Uh, yeah, just uh, basically seeing where we are and how we bring this first shot and um, I feel like this helps guide the movie, guide the shoot. And yeah, bro. So we both took the day. I don't know if anyone even knows that we have day jobs, do they? I don't even know. I mean, I don't even know if we're going to use this here. Probably not. Anyway, we both took the day from our respective day jobs that you may or may not know that we had. Uh, should we tell them what our day jobs are? Mm -hmm. No! <coughs> oh! What did I say about Gabriella? <laughs> off limits! Off limits! Off limits! Say it with me, you fat pig! Get off of him, no! Hello, gentlemen. Hey, Noel. What's up, Noel? Look, I know we're all a bit shaken up about what happened yesterday. And to tell you the truth, I'm sort of sorry. Okay? But out of one corner of my mouth, I say I'm sorry, and out of the other corner, I say I told you so. I know my methods were a bit drastic, but that's how I convey the finer points sometimes. I know. And we are so, so sorry for crossing that line. <clears throat> we're, we're just sorry for crossing that line, Noel. Uh, the footage is gone. It, it won't happen again. I'm confident it won't. I know we're all on the same page now. 
feel this is really my fault, guys. I Alice, mean, it... Alice, don't be silly. Either way, it's all under the bridge. We're good. Okay? Okay. Uh, thank you for that uh, therapy footage exclusive, by the way. That was fascinating and insightful and very candid. How's that going? I can't see how it could be going any better. Dr. Sorlov has been absolutely wonderful. She's making a substantial difference in my life. How many times a week are you seeing her? Twice. It was once, but I upped it to two. One was too few, too far in between. The sessions have been transformative and really encouraging, which is exactly what I need right now. May I ask about the uh, unscratchable itch? Still there, but drastically reduced. See, impulse is impulse, but with therapy comes understanding, which manifests itself as self-control. How so? I'm understanding the hows and whys. The blips and bumps in this roadmap of life experiences that make me me. So now, when there is an impulse, I'm, I'm no longer caught off guard, but I can instead stop and think almost immediately. And how is Gabriella doing? I mean, is she aware of the transition to come? Yes. She just found out this morning, Michaela told her. Her reaction was odd. It, but not odd, but... She reacted almost as if it was due time. Gabriella's reaction? Yes, yes. She acted as if she knew it was coming, as if it was supposed to be, if that makes any sense. The connection between the two of you must be unbelievably palpable. She's only known you for a matter of weeks. I know. I'm, I'm extremely grateful. It feels like all this was fated. Say, no. Do you think we could get together and do some live shooting sometime soon? Would you feel up to that? Absolutely, yes. I'm, I'm feeling better and eager to help now. But look, boys, uh, nature's been calling and has now left several messages. So why don't you message me when you want to meet and we can sort out the details. Okay. Okay. I'm looking forward to hearing about the final plans and all the editing. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Sounds good. Final. Later. Sometimes I wonder about his father. How so? I just feel like there's more there. How to st you don't know how, how what? No. And stop. You have to be proud of yourself. Man, that was amazing in there. You've wanted to change and better yourself. And you have. How was that? Why can't I stop that? Why can't I control it? You probably took a year off of that woman's life just through sheer terror alone. No, that's nonsense and you know that not to be true. Plus, let's, let's call this a recovery, okay? Oh, You've just begun this process. You can't expect overnight shifts or sudden epiphanies. You're putting in the work and the time, and you've come leaping and bounding from where you once were. It's not the same, Earl. Uh, it's different. Once you've done it and you've gotten away with it, the fear is gone, the stigma, the hesitation, it's gone. It's gone for good. Everything just changes. Change. You're gonna be okay. And not just for your own sake. Quite have to be, don't I? So she comes outside. And keep in mind, she just recently moved in, so she's getting to know everyone. She's getting her bearings, you know? It's so wonderful to hear about the rest of your family, too. Oh, Alicia, she's 
wonderful. She's a great spirit. Mom's side? Yes. So she comes outside. And this is in Florida. And she sees this old woman harvesting these oranges across the way. Being all bubbly and friendly as Alicia is, she practically runs towards this woman and introduces herself. She says, hi, my name's Alicia Morgan. I just moved in. What's your name? The old woman looks at her. She nods for a second and says, Jess Pickett. So Alicia says, nice to meet you, Jess Pickett. And for a few weeks, every time that Alicia sees this woman, she says, hi, Jess Pickin, or good morning, Jess Pickin. Then about a month later, the landlady comes by. Alicia had a runny sink or something. And the old lady comes out. And the landlady yells out, good morning, Verna. And Alicia's all confused. She said, why did you just call Jess Verna? The landlady shakes her head. And Alicia continues. She's like, no, no, no. I, I asked her what her name was, and she said it was Jess Pickin. The landlady bursts out laughing. She explains to Alicia that the woman probably said, just picking. She takes the oranges from the tree and sells them at a farmer's market on Sundays. And so for the better part of the month, Alicia had been calling this woman just picking. <laughs> so no, what are your hopes and or goals of things to learn and discover throughout the rest of the making of this documentary, now that we've come so far and are winding down a bit? You know, that's a solid question, Errol. I've learned a whole lot and what I wanted to learn during this process. Now it'll be about the implementation of what it is that I've learned. Are you pleased you went on this journey with us? I truly am. I owe you gentlemen a whole lot and I plan on finding a way to pay you back. No, we are indebted and forever grateful to you. If you have one goal as a father, and a new father at that, what would it be? To not be mine. To not fail, to not be weak, but to be strong. And not just for one, but for two. If you could say one thing to Gabriella right now, as life advice going forward, what would you say? Love yourself. Cherish who you are, all your inner workings, all your little ticks, everything. And don't fear anyone. Especially don't fear yourself. How have kids changed now from when you were her age? Kids need to be kids. But today they have much less time to be themselves. They grow up so much faster, they lose their innocence sooner. I have this uh, friend at work, his name's Earl. He talks about what a nightmare it is watching his teenage daughter go out at night. One thing he said that always stuck with me is that he won't let her become strawberry-flavored plastic. Super sweet faking an innocent facade with a faulty veneer of adulthood and worldliness all condensed in a tiny frame that really knows neither. All the poor generation. They thought they had it all figured out by age 18, only to find out that they weren't equipped for what was needed to handle the real world. And that's why I'm not just going to be a father to Gabriella. I'm going to be her guardian angel. And I'm going to be her best friend for a while there, too. That's lovely, Noel. I guess the silver lining and growing up in a loveless, and desolate hell and watching it make a monster out of me is that I know how I got here. And that's valuable knowledge to accrue. I think I'll have the cavatelli sausage. Ooh, good choice. Uh, a bit much, but... But I'll buy. Yeah, well, you buy. <laughs> I think I'll get the Eno truffle egg toast for myself. So. Good choice. Well, I'm ready. Gentlemen, may I propose a toast? Uh, to Nom. For being so open and selfless. 
to you, to Gabriella, and to your future. Cheers. 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 No, you okay? No? No? Good evening, you sack of severed horse sticks. You shut up before I come over there and fuck start your face until the whole room stinks and your shirt runs off white with a stench of my balls. Jesus Christ! What's the news, Crumb? Why don't you can the commentary and keep munching on your wop kipple? You remember me? Oh, come on, fourth grade, do you remember me? Fourth grade? You cheated at a game of checkers to make me look like an utter fool in front of Mallory Waters. Mallory Waters! Now look at you, you scoundrel! Looks like any hussy with two legs and a watery crevice between her thighs and a chest bigger than yours will do, won't it? Is she a hooker? She smells like squirrels fucking. Life lesson, doll! Don't buy your perfume from the CVS! I should pound her little ruby star fruit like a croquet melon and send you the bill afterwards. Oh, does that get the repro juice squirting out of your sketch? I should rip your innards out with a pitchfork and hang them on New York's tallest monuments! Modern art, baby! No. Steady. I'm not gonna touch him! You scum. One! Two! Three! You should have been shot into a sock! Or your mother's practiced throat not to be left to infiltrate Feinsteining establishments like this with your vile, putrid immorality and your hard wine. Come on, come on, come on. You're gonna king me? You wanna king me? You scum, you harlot, you swine. The Black Plague started with fleas on a rat. Take a look in the mirror and tell me what you see. Take a look, you scum. Take a look. Come on. Right now we're putting the final touches of the beginning touches of this beautiful dollhouse. Look at that. Honey. Show them my pictures. Who? What? Show them my pictures. Show who the pictures? Oh, <laughs> you want to show the camera people your pictures. Okay. Let's see. More pictures. Huh. Look at that. <laughs> see, when I was young, whenever I drew something or offered something, created anything really, I'd always do something odd with my name. I'd sign it differently or spell it backwards or change something about it. Seems like Gabriella likes to do the same thing. Look at that. Honey, where did you see this? Did you see this in a picture? Or is it, is it from your noggin? From your head? Yeah? Huh. Look at that. See? Those bad doors are closed right now. Maybe it's a sign. Paradise. Could be a sign. The doors are closed.
No. 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 Color, the right shade All the nights they turn to day All the sound in unison All the fabric mold is one All the demons won't escape The tide of tempted fate you get up this early every morning? You get used to it. All the demons won't escape The tide of tempted fate Cause I have you These are awesome. I'm fully aware I'm being that annoying father right now showing you these pictures you don't give a crap about, but frankly, I don't give a shit. <laughs> of course we care. It's fascinating how quickly you become doting. Four weeks ago, if someone tried to do this to me, I'd want to rip out their larynx and show it to their mother. Not literally, just to be clear. <laughs> That's unbelievable. What exactly? And they'll say that again. Say what? For the camera, about, um... About what? About your routine. Oh. I've had the same routine every single morning for seven years now. With no change whatsoever? 
Well, that's what makes it a routine, Arrow. Yeah, I know, but still. Take us through it. Every morning I wake up at 4.37 a.m. Why? I don't know. It, because it's, it's later than 4.35 a.m. So in my mind, psychologically, I'm gaming the system by getting two minutes of extra sleep. Besides, 4.40 a.m. is too late. And operating on fives and tens, it's, it's arbitrary to me. Good? Yeah. Good. We're gonna be losing light soon here, man. Oh, well, we're losing light. Where the hell did Norman send everybody off already? 120 Apple Street's gotta get finished by tomorrow. You couldn't have left one other guy? I suppose he thought we were sufficient. By the way, what are you feeding this guy anyway? Ecstasy? And half the time he's smiling like a goddamn lunatic. Nobody smiles at work. Maybe he's on the verge of something that makes him happy. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Still. I mean, he's becoming squirrely. Squirrely? Yeah. What do you have to say to that, no? I'm squirrely, I guess. What can I say? I don't know which one's worse. This knoll or the knoll that half the time looks like you can kill a motherfucker. I'm just concerned that at some point we'll be shooting just to shoot, you know? I mean, I don't want to spend the money or, more importantly, the time continuing when we really do have enough. Yeah, I completely agree. It's funny. There's been a few times where I've almost said, that's a wrap. <laughs> but I feel like this really is that moment. Well, we must be. If not, we wouldn't be filming, right? <laughs> Document everything, as we always say, because you never know. Lana? What are you watching? What? What is this? What is this? What is wrong with you? Why is this in our house? So Noel, as much as I enjoy weighing the positives and negatives of my potentially taking the coaching job at the middle school, what's the big announcement that you wanted to tell us? Gentlemen, this will be our final correspondence. At least for a while. I've been planning something catastrophically large, and there's a good chance this will be the last time I will talk to you. How do you mean? I'm afraid I can't elaborate. I'll have to leave it there. That sounds rather menacing, Noel, especially after all the positive. Oh no, the positives are still there, I assure you. This is just the last leg of my therapy, if you will. Well, did, did you say catastrophic or catastrophically large? You said large after. Uh, did he? Did, did you? Let's just say this will be the most significant contribution of my life. I've been working towards this for a very long time now. Will you be in the lurch? Or did you get everything that you need to get from me? Uh, funny, Noel, we were just discussing that the other night. And we have concluded that, yes, indeed, we've captured everything that we wanted to. Splendid. Well, let's not make this too heavy of a goodbye since it's on Skype and all, and I'm not really too keen on them anyway. Will you be in touch? Yes. When the time is right, I will be in touch. Take care of yourself, Noel. And more importantly, take care of Gabriella. Check and check. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. How will this story end? How will your story end? With the happiest and poppiest of melodies. The best of both of you and your family. Thank you. Any uh, final words for us? This is Noel Rose signing off the grid. Funny, please. Um, yes, there is a man. His name is Noel. He is in possession of his daughter, a beautiful little girl named Gabriella. No, no, like I do. Rose. He loves I Gabriella. Baby, please just listen to me. He's just hang up the He's phone and listen to me. Just talk to me for a second, please, please Lara. She's not safe. I fear for her life. Baby, he drives a Grand Prix, a Pontiac she Grand is... Prix, an older one. No, don't. And this license plate is Baby, SDQ44411. He lives at 1919 Brown Street. Hang up the phone and talk to me, please. Please hurry. One, two, three. There you go. Let's get you buckled in, huh? Yeah. 
Not too tight? Okay. Do you think this is a really good temporary place for it? I do. Gabby, can I ask you something without you being afraid? Are you afraid? I'm never afraid when I'm with you, Daddy. I love you, Gabriella. I love you too. Are you ready to go? Police Officer Benson, badge number 39692, case file AH00154. This audio file was recorded two days prior to the convicted party's release from custody for fulfillment of sentencing. Please note this is for internal reference and citation only. He'll be 17 when I get out. I know not who I am, nor the reflection of what I've become. Is that all? You will know the devil not when you shake his hand, but when he shakes yours. Do you wish to speak about any regrets you might have in regards to everything that transpired? Anything that could help you out? I regret that the project will never be finished. And the film will never be. Ever. Ever. The parts are there. The machinery. <laughs> Brilliant. Glistening. Machinery. But it'll never be constructed. The pieces forever lost. The elements will never be put together. There's only one man left who has the access to it. The... <laughs> Capability. He's gone. Okay. That's it. Your time is up. Yes. It is.
interesting to hear you say that, Noel, because it is all about perception, right? I think for us as filmmakers and for the audience, it's important. No, actually, it's absolutely imperative that we don't try to mince words or hide behind anything that we could possibly hide behind should we feel threatened or uncertain of purpose or direction. I mean, we've spoken about that at length, no. So to that end, I have to ask, do you consider yourself to be a serial killer? Does that apply to you? The term serial killer, society, people these days, they have too vague of an interest in the specific acute learning of something. It's, it's far more superior, but far more difficult to acquire knowledge and have a firm understanding as opposed to applying a label and then conditioning your mind to, to see the label, not what's behind it. So yes, by definition, you could apply a label to me and you would be accurate. But it's all impulse, isn't it? If I was to drag your impulses in the middle of the street, I think I could do a swell job of turning you out to be some spawn of a devil or unsavory spirit. See, these labels, they create vague ideals, and with vague ideals, you can make anyone out to be a monster or a demon. And that's what people do when they don't understand or when they wish not to, so I am not offended by it. See, it creates a troublesome state of affairs for those who fall under that category. Especially for those who don't. Do you have any rules? Mm hmm No women and no children. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs>